Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to do a review of the Phantom 4 Professional Plus. Alright, so I've already posted another video where I've done a low light test and talked about some of the basics of this Phantom. But let's look a little bit more in depth. Um, first of all, I'm going to answer a couple of questions I've had people ask about batteries and propellers. So first of all, the batteries. Even though the Phantom 4 Pro comes with a newer high capacity battery, I'm actually finding the original those are the original Phantom 4 batteries I'm flying right now. They work fine, you get decent flight time. Of course, with the high capacity battery, you'll get a little bit more time. But you can use your old batteries and the propellers, yep, same props for the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro. So you don't have to go out, buy new batteries and new propellers, you're good to go. Now when we look at the card reader, same kind of card reader here, we can use the micro SD cards. Um, I'm using the Lexar cards, use whichever cards you like, same cards work. Now the big difference is, is two things, is the 360 degree obstacle avoidance. So we'll notice here on the front we've got our sensors, but we've also got sensors on the back now, which means that when we're doing autonomous flight, we can be flying backwards and it'll see a tree or an obstacle or something like that, and we'll not crash into that tree. We also have infrared or IR on the sides. So this gives us a complete 360 degree horizontal view of the environment. And it also maps the environment when we fly. So if it does a smart return to home, it actually knows what's around there. It's going to avoid obstacles from a long distance. These can actually see up to 100 feet, um, it's about 30 meters. And, uh, and we also look on the bottom, we've also got our sonar and our sensors on the bottom. So we also have awareness of the environment on the bottom. So this kind of helps a lot for different types of autonomous flight. And because of that, there's different flight modes for following things and doing things like that. Also tap to fly, instead of just doing the regular tap to fly, you can do kind of a selfie mode where you can fly out in reverse. It can see what's behind it as well. So, um, so that's going to help a lot. But the big thing that I know that a lot of people really care about is the camera. So the camera looks very similar to the camera on the Phantom 4, except the camera on the Phantom 4 Professional is a larger camera. You can actually see looking at it right now, it's larger, it's higher capacity. Um, the lens is slightly bigger, which means that your old filters are not gonna work anymore. But the good news is because of the type of camera that it is, you're not gonna need ND filters as much as you used to because we now have complete control over the exposure triangle, which is the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. The ISO determines the sensitivity of the camera, so that means a higher ISO, which this one now goes up to 12,800, so it can shoot in very low light. So that's the sensitivity of the sensor can go up and down. The second thing in the exposure triangle, and actually the second and the third thing, are both controlled by the aperture. The aperture is the hole in the lens that allows the light to come and strike the sensor. So there's two different things. There's an aperture and there's a shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long is that opening open for? So we can now adjust that and we have a mechanical shutter so we can actually do some pretty high shutter speeds now. And the third thing is the aperture is how big is that opening. And this will go from f2.8 to f11 and it's adjustable. So we can actually adjust all three of those things. And because of that, if we want to have a slower shutter speed, like maybe for shooting video, we can clamp down that aperture to a very, very small opening. And that very, very small opening will limit the amount of light coming in, which means that we can get a proper exposure while shooting at a slower shutter speed in brighter light. And typically that's what an ND filter would do. So if we wanna do a very fast shutter speed, we can actually open up that aperture nice and big and let lots of light in, and then we can do a very quick shutter speed which will freeze time. So the slow shutter speed will blur motion and the fast shutter speed will freeze it in time. And by adjusting the aperture manually, we can do that now, which was very difficult to do that before. Now with the aperture, of course, when you have a larger aperture, it has a shallower depth of field, which throws the background out of focus. And then the opposite is when we clamp it down, everything is in focus, so it becomes a large depth of field. Now because of the nature of a drone and we're flying, out there, we're not going to see that too much because most of the objects are going to be far away from you. So we're not going to be really doing a lot of depth of field effects with that as much as we are to use it to control shutter speed for video and different types of effects. And the other thing that's new here on the Phantom 4 Pro is the larger sensor. We now have a full one inch sensor. Because of that, it's actually four times larger than the old sensor 
And what we get here is we get much sharper photographs. We get a lot more dynamic range, almost 12 stops of dynamic range, which shows detail in shadows and highlights simultaneously. And then also what we're doing is we're getting 20 megapixel stills in DNG RAW. The same thing with the video now. The video shoots H.264, which is done before, but it also now shoots H.265, which is a newer format of video compression, which shows less compression, smaller file size. And we can also shoot up to 4K video at 60 frames per second at 100 megabits per second, which means a lot less, almost half the amount of compression that we had on the previous copter. So we've got really good crisp video. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about just the basics here because I know um, some people were asking a lot of questions here about the technical side of things. So that's basically what's new in the technical stuff. Now we also have the Plus, which is what I'm flying right now as I'm flying the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. And the Plus means that I have a screen on here. So this screen is a built-in Android device. It just pops open. Uh, there's just one button turns it on and off. And then when I charge it, I charge the controller and the screen at the same time. So this just goes directly into the screen. When I start this up, it goes directly into the Go app. Now, the other thing to know is it is an Android device. So um, other third-party apps can be loaded on here. Um, just connect to Wi-Fi and connect like you would any other device. This is a thousand nits of brightness, which is almost double the amount of an iPhone or an iPad. So when you look on here, you can see it's an incredibly bright display and it's using the same technology as DJI's new Crystal Sky technology which enables you to see this app even in bright sunlight because it's so bright. So that's just great for that. What I like about it though is I just take two units out here. I've got a controller, I've got a copter. I turn my controller on, turn my copter on and I'm ready to fly. I don't have to be connecting wires and all that kind of stuff. So it gets me in and out, gets me out quickly. When I'm done, turn that off, turn this off, fold down the screen pack it away and I'm done for the day. So it's very, very easy. I like that. So that's all the hardware. I know you're quite anxious to get this thing in the air. And so today is a little bit of an overcast day. In fact, it's been spitting, it's been raining a little bit. And that's gonna be great because I already did a test. The previous test I did was a low light test. So check that out. You can see the link down there or somewhere here on the screen. Um, so check that out. You're gonna to get to see the low light performance, how this works in high ISO. I even compared it against a Phantom 4. What I'm gonna to do today though, is we're in daylight, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna fly around. We're gonna check out the video. We're gonna test photographs and we're gonna test video and this nice clear light. I also have a Mavic here, so I might throw the Mavic up a little bit and compare some of the photographs with the Mavic and the uh, Phantom 4 Pro. So without further ado, why don't we just get this thing up in the air and start flying. to run, we wanted to fall together, back then our world seemed so clear, we crystal bright, shimmering lights around us, we take flight into the sky. All right, so let's have a look at the camera settings. So here we are, if we're in the still settings here, we can go down. And if we look under the camera here, we have the option to go into manual mode. So here at manual, notice it's really high. We can adjust the ISO. We can just click and drag that down. 
So what we can do is if we want to reduce the amount of light, well, we can do two things. We can, let me just tap to focus, and we'll just go back in there. So we can either take the aperture, and we can um, close the aperture down, so we go this way. And the other thing we can do is if we want to also, we can speed up the shutter speed. So if we want to go this way, we get a faster shutter speed, so that slows it down. So, you know, so we can take a photo right now. Notice we're at ISO 100, we're at aperture f11, and we're at the shutter speed 160. So here's the thing we can do, though, is we can actually just tap to close this, and you can see the settings are up here. So there's our ISO, shutter speed, and our f-stop. So I can adjust the little uh, wheel on here, and notice what's changing right now is I'm changing the ISO. So if I go to 100, it's there. If I tap it, now I can adjust the shutter speed. So see, there's 1 50th. So 1 60th is about what you want for video right there. And so now we can go to the f-stop and we can dial in how bright we want it right there. So we can do that based on the f-stop now. So that means that we've got 1 60th of a second shutter speed, so we're going to get smooth video. We can see we're in auto white balance. So if we want to change the white balance, we can go in here, camera settings. And here we can change our white balance. So if we want to go to cloudy, which is what we are right now, we can do that. Just tap away, it closes the app. So you can see we can do that. And we can take a photograph just by snapping there, graph by clicking on the shutter button, just like before. And so you can see that we can adjust that. So that's really nice to be able to do the ISO shutter and the f-stop separately. So we have the options. We can either do it with the wheel, we tap to change the option we want to change. Or of course, we can just go in there into the app here and then we go under the manual mode so we can adjust our ISO aperture and shutter speed manually and there's our meter down there. So we can see that there. Now the other thing is we can go into aperture priority by just tapping the little A there. Let me just show you another thing here. Let's go into the video mode here. And then under video, there's our video here. We can change the sizes here. Notice we can go up to 60 frames. So the other thing we can do is under here, encoding form, we've got H.264 or 265. Okay, I'm going to do a little obstacle avoidance test here, and we're going to fly into this wall over there and see if it stops. So let's start going forwards. All right, so that worked nicely. All right, let's bring it back. And this time I'm going to flip it around. And let's test the rearward obstacle avoidance by flying backwards. And let's fly straight into that building. And yep, I got it. So it looks like the obstacle avoidance is working nicely. The other thing I'm going to test is I'm going to show it on myself here. All right, let's try the obstacle avoidance and see if it works on myself. So I'm going to fly towards myself right now, going forwards. And here we go, I can see it stopped. I'm gonna come over here, let it go a little closer. Okay, that's all the way there. It's not gonna move any closer. Now, as I move towards the copter, notice it backs off. So now I'm gonna to come towards myself backwards and see if it stops, and I'm gonna to move towards it and see if it moves away. Stops right there, I move closer. and it moves away. So you can see the obstacle avoidance works really well. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an opportunity to win my new video training series, jaw-dropping drone images. So that's uh, everything you need to know about processing photographs and video inside of Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and Lightroom. Um, I give you all my tips and tricks and show you my entire workflow of how I create all my images, including my HDR panoramas. So I'm gonna give away a copy of that in the next week. So what I would like you to do is go to Twitter or Facebook or Instagram at Photoshop Cafe. Follow us and uh, add the tag winner DVD. And if you do that, I'm gonna pick actually two winners over the next couple of weeks and I'm gonna let you know. So if you join us on the different social medias, each one you have one more chance of winning. So all right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the other one that I have where I show the low light test and do some video and photograph comparisons with the Phantom 4. Um, so you can see that in the links underneath, or maybe I'll put it on the screen here or something like that at the very end. Also, check out my Mavic Pro videos. So if you like these kind of videos, I've got lots more coming, and if you want to see them, become part of the Cafe Crew. How do you do that? 
just hit the subscribe button right now. You'll see it right there. And then you can become part of the cafe crew and you'll get the new tutorials and the new videos that I do every single week on Photoshop, Lightroom, drones, and other types of gadgets. So I hope you enjoy that kind of stuff. And if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to add a comment. There's always some good discussions going. I'm gonna do a Q&A pretty soon too. So if you have any questions here about the Phantom 4 Pro or the Mavic Pro, uh, don't forget, just add your comment underneath, ask your question, and uh, in the next week or so, I'm gonna do a Q&A video where I'm gonna look at those questions and answers. Until next time, I'll see you guys at the cafe. See